Hi, I'd like to talk a little bit today about selective perception and positive programming and its tools, memory and imagination for creating suffering. Uh, some years ago, about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, MS. I'd been having a lot of trouble walking up and down stairs. I uh, didn't have the strength to do a lot of things that I normally would have. I had the feeling I wasn't eating well or something. Uh, something was just taking uh, its toll on me. And it was okay in the sense that I didn't feel so bad about it until I found out that I had MS. Uh, previous to that, I just felt tired and uh, blew it off as uh, a passing phase. Uh, then my focus became very, very keen. Uh, now I had a disease, a disease that was probably going to kill me, at least maim me in many ways. I was so fearful, I spent a lot of time reading everything I could. I was on the internet endlessly looking for solutions. And what I came to realize was I was focusing so much. I was living in so much fear over what was happening, or at least what I presumed to be happening, that I completely lost any joy in my life. I would fight every day in an effort to keep the, the strength in my legs working and uh, realizing that that was futile, but I tried anyhow. I kept thinking if I was just stronger, I would still be able to override the fact that there was no, no nerve impulse to my legs. So every night I would take a walk, a long walk up a very steep hill, and uh, one particular night, it was about five degrees out, it was very cold winter, and I found myself at the very top of this hike uh, with my legs getting very, very weak and suddenly realizing that I could collapse here as I had on many occasions and not be able to walk and I could end up freezing to death. That kind of bothered me at the time and uh, I really, really, really got depressed. I, and suddenly out of the blue this great epiphany came over me. It was quite an in-depth epiphany. I'll give the short version. Uh, let's just assume that you're uh, given life, uh, you're given this body and uh, all these senses and abilities and one day you lose one of them. Let's say you lose your sense of smell and uh, the first thing you do is you complain about the fact that you can't smell. You go to try to find solutions to your smelling problem. You go to every doctor, you read everything you can, you tell all of your friends how annoyed you are you can't smell. They're talking about the great dinner and the, the smell of the dinner and the smell of the flowers and you can't smell them and you're really annoyed and so you do find comfort. Some people do uh, give you sympathy and that's great so you can complain even more about it. And you do this quite regularly and then another day walks along and you uh, lose your t sense of taste and you think to yourself, okay, great, I, I couldn't taste very well before without my sense of smell, now I can't taste at all. Now I'm really annoyed, and so you have those two things to complain about, and you do, and you do a lot of it, and you get sympathy from some, you get, uh, some people are very annoyed with you and just don't want to be around you. Then you lose your sense of sight, okay, now, now you can't see where you're going and you can't smell anything. And now you're really annoyed with that. So you're complaining endlessly that you can't smell, you can't see, and, uh, and you can't taste anything. So that goes on and on and on. And your complaints continue to be around these things. Your focus tends to be around these things. And then before you know it, you lose your ability to hear. Now you can't hear people talking to you and, uh, and you can barely hear yourself because your internal dialogue is just screaming out of all the problems that you're having. So as you go along complaining about all these things, you suddenly find yourself losing your voice. And without a voice, you can't even complain to people. Now you just have the inner brain screaming at you about all the things you're missing. You're missing your sight, you're missing your hearing, you're missing your taste, you're missing all these wonderful things. And uh, before you know it, you've lost everything that was given to you, all these gifts that were given to you, except for the one last gift, which we'll call that your life. And uh, you're about to lose your life. You see that you're about to lose your life. Uh, not that you can actually lose your life, but let's just, we'll talk about that later. You're about to lose your life and uh, you suddenly realize that all the things that you have lost, you never once really enjoyed any of them. You took them all for granted. I mean, obviously they were gifts, they were yours. They were yours forever and you should keep them. And when they were taken from you, it was a misery. And so rather than thinking about how wonderful it was to have any one of them, all you spent your time doing was telling people how you had missed the ones you did not have. 
Well, that hit me that particular night very strong. And uh, suddenly I started to smell the fireplaces burning off in the distance. And uh, my God, it smelled so wonderful just to smell that smoke. And then I looked up in the sky and the moon was so beautiful and the clouds were great. And I thought to myself, it's so beautiful to look at these things. And the cold, was it was so bitter cold out, but it felt so nice to be able to feel that cold. And there was something really nice about that. So all these things started coming to me and I realized that I had never appreciated any of them. I had taken them all for granted. And I wasn't unlike most people in that I assumed that things are supposed to be good. I mean, we're raised to believe that things have to be positive and wonderful and when they're not, there's something wrong. You know, we have a small percentage of people that make a, a, a screaming and raving on the planet and we think the whole planet's screaming and raving and we don't realize that most of it's actually pretty contented. And it's kind of the same way with the body. Something doesn't function and somehow we think there's a problem with that when we don't realize that the rest of the body's doing an amazing amount of things. And that's just the body. Forget the fact that you're not your body because it's a continuous cycle that you keep watching from the time you're very small till the time you're very old as far as physical features go. So the reality hit me that I couldn't lose my life if it was the last thing I could lose because well, I was the life that was living in this scenario, or at least seeing through this whole thing, using these eyes and using this body to feel and live and do. And so at that moment, I came to the conclusion that rather than having a myopic focus on all the things that were missed, I should start living for all the things that I actually could experience and enjoy. I could still talk and see and I could still feel and uh, and actually I could still juggle and I could still play guitar and I could eat and digest and there were so many things that were still going on even though some of them were becoming dysfunctional the fact of the matter was many of them were beyond my wildest beliefs they were still functioning wonderfully and I couldn't understand how it is all these cells can get together and actually function to begin with so all I can say is the whole idea that everything has to be perfect and wonderful, we've got this wonderful idea that if things aren't perfect and if you keep thinking they'll be perfect, they will. And when they're not, you must have done something wrong, only to realize that you had no control over any of this anyhow. What's going on is going on. It's, you know, the clouds moving in and raining on your parade had nothing to do with the fact that you did something wrong. It was just your parade was on a day when it was going to rain. So all I can suggest is Start looking for the things you have, start enjoying what you have, quit looking in your past and thinking about what could have been and what was and what might have been and think about what is and realize it's all good. Later.